Now, while this uh, year's International World AIDS Day campaign may not be or may be about getting to zero, that will be zero new HIV infections, zero discrimination and zero AIDS-related deaths. Activists will be the first to tell you that we are a long way off. In spite of several awareness campaigns, HIV AIDS continues to tighten its grip, not just in poor and developing countries, but also in wealthier nations such as the United States and the United Kingdom. Across this region, a conference barely three months ago identified Indonesia, India and Pakistan as key fronts in HIV AIDS. And in Singapore, the Communicable Disease Centre says most patients are diagnosed only when they reach the late stage of infection. So, to help us understand some of how this fight against this disease is shifting, we're joined by Professor Roy Chan, President of Action for AIDS. Good morning, Roy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, Roy, <laughs> uh, you know, we understand that all it takes is really a, a finger prick or saliva test to sort of find out whether you are infected. But many people still, I guess, shy away from the whole idea of even going for a test. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, why do you think this is still happening? Well, many reasons. I think everyone has their own personal reason, which is, uh, it could be, for example, being afraid of knowing their, their result mm -hmm. because of the, they were they're afraid of um, being discriminated or you know, having to declare their HIV status to their families, friends and loved ones. Um, they may be afraid they can't get into treatment because it's expensive. Um, they just the simple thing of getting to a clinic might be an obstacle for many people as well. Right. Um, so many reasons we have to address all of them. And I guess you know we're saying that social stigma has a lot to do with it. It does the, too. Yeah. The impression that even just by walking to a clinic, people might think, oh, "Why is he going there?" You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we we have to like explore new ways of getting testing out into community and not not keep them only in clinic settings. I think that's something which we need to. And technology these days has allowed us with, with, uh, with a point of care testing or, uh, or, or testing which doesn't require laboratories. Mm -hmm. you know, we have these technologies these days. Well, what is uh, interesting is also that the rise in the number of infections is uh, among young adults in their 20s and 30s. Um, one would have thought that you know, ever since this disease has been around, that there's been more awareness, more education going on. So why is it that still the young people are, are you know, the ones... Uh, well, hurt. you know, I think young people, because they're young, are experimenting and, and this is the, the, the nature of young people. Plus the fact that, you know, with medication, there is very little obvious uh, illness right now. People right. who get on to treatment regimens uh, and, and stick on them actually live very, very fairly normal lives. Um, okay. they, li they, they don't look ill. Um, so there's not that much visible disease amongst uh, people in the community. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, because of the fear of disclosure and that sort of thing, uh, many infected individuals don't tell their friends they're infected. So, you know, the disease is very invisible. So, ironically, it's almost because medication Absolutely. has uh, become better. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's uh, almost, uh, it's all backfired in yeah. the sense that it's the, the, the perception that, you know, you don't need to worry because there's very effective medication has led to this um, situation. Is it also true that it happens mainly in uh, men, that in the male population? Well, certainly in Singapore, yeah. um, it la in the first six months of this year, 95% were males of those who were detected. Is that because of uh, risky behaviour that they choose to indulge in? Or, I mean, well, no, I, I think that our epidemiology, the pattern of infection here is, is almost 50% MSM or men of sex with men, 50% yeah. heterosexual. And um, because of that, you can have the vast majority of infections ma found in males. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And also we hear that, I mean, in terms of the, the checkups and the uh, discovery cases, uh, heterosexuals are the ones who fall behind because, again, I think uh, there is that social stigma that comes with having it that maybe I, they think... I, no, I think the stigma affects both heterosexuals yeah. and MSM. I, I think that the, the, we have a higher rate of detection, voluntary detection amongst the gay bisexual community because there's a lot more awareness has been going on for a mm. long time and um, about HIV and, and, and the need to get free regular testing in that community. Though by, <clears throat> by, by, by no means is it good enough either. Okay. Yeah. What about testing too late? We also know that some of them discover it in a later stage, which is, uh, you know... That's, that's, a, that, that's a fact. I yeah. think it's a fact that c certainly this year, for example, 58% of our newly diagnosed cases were already in late stages. Um, the prognosis is much better if people test earlier because you get into treatment. Um, 
the you know the the, the, the lifespan is almost normal in terms of, sort of uh, based on certain modeling exercises which have, which have, which have been done. Mm -hmm. Now earlier we we're talking about how the effectiveness of the drugs have made it sort right. of uh, ha have been helping people a bit too much to the point where certain attitudes may have become a bit bl blasé where they kind of think well you know it's not really a big deal yeah. but. Uh, let, let's try and correct that because the medication isn't a cure all, right? Absolutely I mean, not. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's certainly given infected individuals a lot of hope right. in terms of leading relatively normal lives. I think that it is, they are not cures; they are ex expensive. They and they do have toxicities in, mm -hmm. and have to be taken um, long term on a regular basis. Uh, um, however, you know, we really need to uh, have give people this the hope at the same time not to drop their guard against uh, in getting infected in the first place. Mm -hmm. So again, prevention of course, better than cure. Prevention, and I think the interesting thing which has happened this year in terms of certain research is mm -hmm. that um, prevention, if you get people into prevention, in, in, into treatment, right. treatment is prevention. You can actually drop the, in fact, the transmission to almost zero. So what do you think is really holding us back? I mean, let, let's talk about this now from an Asian context where, again, we're going back to the social stigma issue. Do you think that is the predominant uh, I think that is one of the main drivers of the epidemic is yeah. the stigma and discrimination which people have in their minds regarding you know getting tested number one getting even talking about HIV AIDS there's not enough discourse in in in, in the community mm -hmm. um, especially amongst those who are, are at risk of infected of, of infection there's not enough um, you know when you get into a relationship talk about HIV AIDS have you had an AIDS test you know right, right. it's not done. And, and I, I mean, but then again, it's unlikely to happen anytime soon because of the cultural, well, the way the country is. You're, you're an right. Asian population, which is more conservative. You know, I think that this stigma thing is, is universal. I don't yeah. think that, for example, you might say the U.S. and, and mm. that sort of they've been handling you know, for, you know, much more out, out, outright and frank about their messaging. But it's still a big deal there. I think okay. it's still a big deal and everywhere in the world. And being Asian doesn't make us peculiar and therefore... Um, have a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't make it less of a deal, but we should be able to talk about it. We I definitely think that's need to talk about it. If people don't talk about HIV, is not, we're not going to be able to really yeah. stop it. And also a better understanding, because I think uh, one of the myths that people say, just from physical contact, just by shaking hands with someone, you can... Yeah, those uh, myths, it's amazing how, how these things get stuck in people's yeah. minds, and you know we really need to overcome that. Okay. Well, thank you, Roy, for coming in, speaking with thank us this morning. Thank you very much. And that was uh, Professor Roy Chan, President of Action for AIDS, uh, speaking us, uh, to us today on, as we observe, World AIDS Day. Now, just a, a quick bit of uh, information. It's been 30 years since HIV AIDS burst onto the international arena. Globally, the number of people becoming infected with HIV continues to fall, and the number of AIDS-related deaths is dropping. But what plagues efforts to truly stem this disease often lies in discrimination. A fear of social stigma often makes people reluctant to access life-saving HIV testing, prevention and treatment services. So that is the theme of this year's campaign for greater awareness in Singapore.